thank you all for staying with me through this very long episode. I like to make a little bit of a summary now. I think one of the benefits that came to my success from all this peat moss problems is uh, lowering the temperature down here with the air conditioner and also too that dries the air out some when it's very rainy outside and the humidity is just high. But the main culprit in all of this problems that I've had was that the peat moss uh, most likely had uncomposted material in it which uh, did not do well even after pasteurizing and still allowed mold and bacteria to flourish and cause issues. It also caused the issue where the mycelium would run up the size of the bags, if you remember, and it would join the bags together. You can see though there's absolutely none of that problem now. I learned that different batches of peat moss can have varying pHs too, so that can throw some things off. Although you know that I still add the hydrated lime to my casing mix to uh, increase the pH in the basic ranges that helps keep contamination away. Peat moss, although I don't recommend it, is still cheaper than the vermiculite. I'm paying about oh, a little over $30 for four cubic feet of uh, vermiculite in a bag. Uh, peat moss, you can get bales of the premium stuff, which hopefully works better for about $20 a, a bale. Um, but I'm still going to stick with the, peat, the uh, vermiculite only. But if you choose to use the peat moss too, make sure you're using the premium variety and it, removing any bits of sticks and other stuff. You might even want to shake it through a screen to let only the smaller bits through. Another thing I learned was that the tubs did not help with pinning on the sides. Um, decreasing the light really didn't help. It was more of the uh, amount of cavity that's between the sawdust block and the bag. It just fills in whatever open space there. And it matters too that if you're using the peat moss and it has uncomposted material in it, that uh, it'll delay pinning from the top because it's still eating more food. And rather it'll pin heavily off the sides. And also too, with the tubs, if one area of the tub goes bad with mold, then you pretty much have to throw the entire thing out. Bags, it's all separated out, decentralized, and things will last longer and do better that way. When you have the bags though, make sure that uh, you're trying to set them squat so that the, the bag colonizes with as little space in between it as possible. Now, upstairs where I'm colonizing these, I'm still squeezing five bags per a shelf, so I still kind of have to squish them together a bit. But you can see when I bring them down here, some of these shelves I'm only doing four bags per shelf, just so they're not crowded. Um, as far as not using a casing, I decided that was not good because it creates some wild pinning. Um, where you still have some stuff, a lot of open cavity area up around the top because the block is not perfectly flat on the top. And so you, things will grow into the block. Also too, you have to increase the humidity higher so the top doesn't dry out. You have to have a higher side of the bag, which means that you're gonna get more stem production. So I really, I just don't recommend that uh, using it uncased. Um, now, as far as for other mushroom varieties, this casing would probably still work. I'm only using three handfuls per bag, um, which leaves a, a thin layer, about a quarter inch layer on the very top of the block for it to start growing through. And like I said, I might try some experiments too where I leave a little bit of bald spots at the top so it hopefully creates a higher number of mushrooms that are smaller. But I plan to try doing the piapinas again with just a vermiculite since I had failure with my first couple runs with those and probably most likely it was because of the peat moss again. But other oyster mushrooms say pearl oysters, tree oysters, blue oysters, yellow oysters, pink oysters and all that good bunch 
would not work well with the casing just because uh, you're going to get a whole lot of pins usually with those. It's going to be hard to get the casing mix out of it. It'll grow kind of nested in between the bouquets of mushrooms that come up. All those varieties are much better off just fruiting um, from a side environment or using uh, plastic with holes punched at the top and then it just grows through clusters of holes with uh, no casing. And uh, I've seen that being used in commercial farms. And it's nice too when you do it that way with other varieties of oyster mushrooms because then you get nothing but small little bouquets that uh, ship well and get less, very little stem to them. Also too, when you're misting this casing mix, don't flood it with water. Um, I definitely found that getting things too wet, the water will soak into the sawdust block itself and cause it to spoil. So be uh, kind of experimental. Days that you think it's getting drier in here and the pollen foggers have to play catch up or you got to miss the uh, floors and the walls to bump the humidity up. Uh, just take little samples, take a little bit of pinch off the top. You can give it a squeeze and see how much water slips out. If it's a lot of water, you know it's nice and wet. If you can turn the block on the side and the casing just flows over it very easily, you can tell the reticulite is very dry. But the reticulite should clump up a, a good bit when it's nice and moist. And you want to make sure that you always try to keep it moist when there's mushrooms growing out of it, it'll suck the moisture from the top even more, so give those ones with mushrooms developing in it a little bit more of a misting. Oh, let's see. Um, also too, in my opinion, the vermiculite is easier to clean up than the peat moss. You see I still have a little bit on the floor that I, I'm going to blast away with the hose into the same style manner where I just kind of hose it all to the other side of this uh, plastic then let it dry out and sweep it up with a shop vac. But obviously the vermiculite doesn't, won't uh, cause any nasty problems because uh, when I was sweeping up that peat moss, if you didn't clean up the shop vac every other day you would start getting funky. But, you know, that again could have been the peat moss is bad, but vermiculite is much, so much nicer. It also has a kind of a, a cleaner laboratory look to it instead of a outdoor soil um, kind of grow look to it. So I think it, it looks more professional. It's easier to work with. It's easier to put the casing on it because it flows right into it. So I can't really find any flaws with it and I'm not really sure why it was written down in for instance the uh, uh, all the main books like the Growing Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms by Paul Stamets that uh, peat moss was the norm. Only, only reason I can think of that is because large mushroom farms have uh, contract deals with like landscaping or as, as landscaping companies do to uh, get the best peat moss that has the uh, best composition while the other stuff just goes to the uh, end consumer in garden stores and the like. So that concludes this episode. I'm glad you've hung in there with me. I'm going to use this casing mix to hopefully bring you uh, an episode all about Piapinos here shortly in the future. And I hope you can find vermiculite in large quantities for a good price and that you have great success like I do. So see you next time on Mushroom Adventures. <laughs>